This might sound baffling, but anime has existed for over a century now. However, the true global appreciation of this incredible art form took off during the 1980s. With the rapid growth of the Japanese economy and the popularity of VHS tapes, iconic animation studios such as Studio Ghibli and Kyoto Animation started to draw the attention of the world. The 80s are hailed as the golden era for anime in many ways, and in this video, we decided to bring you a bucket load of nostalgia as we explore some of the finest 80s anime shows and movies. Before we get into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Dragon Ball 1986 Dragon Ball is an anime that truly defines the 1980s, and this incredible show features the legendary fighter Son Goku and his adventures. The story is premised on a twisted version of Earth, and this ridiculously strong and spirited fighter seeks to find the seven Dragon Balls. Once the quest is completed, the Grand Dragon can be summoned, which can then grant the bearer one single wish. However, Goku's journey is full of challenges as he meets numerous villains along the way and must fight them for survival. Luckily for Goku, he also has the support of an assortment of companions as he tries to invoke the supreme powers of the Grand Dragon. We don't want to get into the debate of whether or not this is the best Dragon Ball adaptation over the years. However, it's certainly the beginning of an unforgettable saga that attracted millions of fans all over the world. The story is nicely written and captures the adventures of a young Goku along with his friends and enemies as their journey continues. The narrative is laced with some wicked humor, and it's interesting to observe Goku's journey as he improves himself as a fighter. The animation quality is nothing to write home about, but it's still pretty standard animation for the time. If you intend to watch the series, we strongly recommend watching the original Japanese version with subtitles, because the dubbing doesn't do justice to the show. Overall, if you want some stress-free entertainment and to refresh your childhood memories, this version of Dragon Ball simply can't be missed. Fist of the North Star, 1984 The events of The Fist of the North Star take place in a post-apocalyptic world where everything has been destroyed following a nuclear holocaust. The remaining survivors have to struggle for limited resources, and there exists a rule of the strong across the land. Kenshiro is one such survivor, who has mastered the deadly martial art form called Hokuto Shinken, which roughly translates to Fist of the North Star. He wanders across the wasteland and he delivers a unique brand of vigilante justice, accompanied by a young thief and an orphan girl. The oppressors must beware this lethal fighter who can make use of 708 hidden pressure points in the body to destroy opponents from within. Can the animalistic world order be sorted by this courageous fighter? This anime has inspired and impressed several renowned personalities, including popular wrestler-turned-actor John Cena, who claims that the movie version of Fist of the North Star is one of his favorites. The anime series was a pioneer in many ways, bringing in the violent animated action that presented an exaggerated and brutal version of a post-apocalyptic world. The violent doses of action are neutralized by some emotional moments and good humor, and the narrative manages to keep you interested the whole time. The animation does a brilliant job of capturing the subtle designs of the original manga written by Burnson and illustrated by Tetsuo Hara. Even the peppy soundtrack is perfectly suited for the narrative. This anime is not meant for the squeamish because the violence depicted here is quite gruesome and extreme, but if you can handle such graphic details, you are in for a classical journey. Kiki's Delivery Service, 1989. This fantasy anime written and directed by Heo Miyazaki and animated by Studio Ghibli is a true gem from the 80s. It tells the story of a young 13-year-old witch named Kiki who wants to seek out an independent life. It's an essential part of her life in order to complete the witch study, and she must settle in a city for an entire year and survive on her own. Kiki is a headstrong and resourceful young girl and she decides to head to the seaside town of Koriko. She establishes her own delivery service where she uses her magic broom as the delivery vehicle. However, Kiki and her talking cat Gigi have some challenges ahead of them once she loses her ability to fly. Can she still manage to survive the rest of her time in the new community? This anime movie won the Animage Anime Grand Prix Prize and was critically acclaimed and appreciated by a worldwide audience. It's an absolute treat for animation fans, and the narrative delivers an important message about hope and self-belief. Besides all the seriousness in the story, there's also an element of humor that keeps things lively. The supporting characters are nicely inserted in the narrative, and credit is due for the brilliance of the writer. The beautiful artwork captures the young girl's journey, and there is magic in the simplicity of things. It ranks right up there amongst the finest Disney movies ever made, and Kiki's Delivery Service is an anime for audiences across all age groups. Legend of the Galactic Heroes, 1988 
This space anime tells the story of a distant future in our galaxy, and it is a universe that is filled with terraformed worlds that are inhabited by interstellar human beings. There are two mighty space powers who are at war with each other on the basis of their beliefs and ideals. The Imperial side is led by a military genius named Reinhard von Lohengram, and Wen Li is one of the notable leaders of the other side called the Free Planets Coalition. Both have their reasons to continue the long-drawn conflict, and it often comes down to the conflict of their personal vendors. What will be the final outcome of this continual space war? The intriguing storyline features a struggle between two empires that will surely remind fans of Star Wars, and the narrative has a deeply philosophical standpoint apart from all the action and drama that unfolds. The main advantages of this anime are believable strategies and relatable storytelling, and the social commentary is indeed thought-provoking. The character development is spectacular to say the least, and a lot of effort has gone into the detailing of everything from the locations to the history. The animation quality might be considered mediocre, but one has to remember that this show is over 30 years old. Fans often term this series as the Babylon 5 of the anime world, and the breathtaking scope of this narrative can never be denied. Witness Yoshiki Tanaka's magnum opus and experience this unforgettable treat for every sci-fi fan out there. Akira, 1988. This cyberpunk anime film directed by Katsuhiro Otomoto is one of the most aesthetically appealing anime out there. The plot deviates considerably from the manga, and the movie talks about a secret military project that endangers Tokyo. The setting is that of 31 years after World War III, and a rebuilt Tokyo is now called Neo-Tokyo. Shotaro Kaneda is the leader of a bike gang in this unruly new world, and his friend Tetsuo is made the subject of the military experiment after an accident. Tetsuo develops supreme telekinetic powers, and he decides to use these powers for evil. As Kaneda tries his best to rescue Tetsuo, secrets are unveiled about Akira, the force that has destroyed Tokyo in the past. Will the sequence of events result in another doomsday for Earth? Akira is one of the finest specimens of Japanese animation, and its cinematic influence can be considered to be on par with the likes of Pulp Fiction and Citizen Kane. It's a neat adaptation of an iconic manga, and the element of hyper-reality in the story can be quite unnerving. There are some incredible action sequences, but the film is not just some senseless action fest. The understanding of characters like Tetsuo, who aren't aware of the true potential of their godlike powers, and his psychological struggles are no less haunting. Well-written dialogue, eye-catching animation, and the ultra-violent fantasy through a brilliant story make this film so iconic. The carnage is not meant for everyone, but the ones who can digest the strong content will be treated to a groundbreaking anime. Royal Space Force, The Wings of the Hanamis, 1987. The plot is premised in a fictional world where space travel has not yet been mastered. All the attempts made to launch space missions have resulted in the deaths of those involved. But Shiloh, a cadet in the Royal Space Force, is a gutsy young fellow who wants to bring about the change despite the risks associated. The space travel program has been stuck in development for 10 years and faces numerous issues, such as lack of funds. However, it will soon be revealed that there are greater problems associated with previous failures, and Shiloh will learn more about the controversial space program and the conspiracies surrounding it. Both Royal Space Force and Akira were equally impactful projects in terms of familiarizing the West with anime culture, but Akira stole much of the limelight by appealing to an adolescent audience. While Royal Space Force is comparatively underrated, it shines with a multi-themed storyline that also throws up intriguing concepts, such as the insignificance of humans in the vastness of the universe. There are some beautifully constructed scenes in the mix of things, and you'll be treated to an absolute visual delight. The narrative might appear to be a a tad slow, but this uniquely moving anime hits back with a climax that will stay with you for a very long time. There are some disturbing and questionable moments in the anime, but we will advise you to look past the controversies and check out this hidden gem. My Neighbor Totoro, 1988. Satsuki and Mei are two young girls who move into their country house in order to care for their ailing mother. While a new life can be challenging for young girls, the sisters soon discover some fun company in the neighboring forests. These forests are inhabited by an adorable blue forest spirit named Totoro, and Satsuki and Mei become a part of some magical adventures. They fall in love with their new life, even though their house is old and falling apart, and the girls cannot wait to explore every bit of this magical land. Heo Miyazaki is a special name in the world of 
animation, and he proves yet again why his art is absolutely priceless. My Neighbor Totoro is one of those movies that'll stay with you for a very long time, and the simplistic storyline leaves a deep impact on the audience. The story is partially autobiographical because Miyazaki and his brothers had to go through a similar time when their mother was hospitalized for a very long time due to tuberculosis. The director even stated that the movie-making experience would have been far too painful if the protagonists were boys instead of girls. The typical Ghibli Studio animation is surreal and ravishing to watch, and the music is just as memorable. Sometimes a movie can be awesome even without a clear villain or moral lessons, and this simple storytelling is a great example of that. The Mysterious Cities of Goal, 1982. It's a story from the year 1932, and the protagonists must explore the mysterious 16th century South America to find some personal answers. It all starts after the navigator of a Spanish ship, Mendoza, rescues a young boy named Esteban from a shipwreck. The young boy has a medallion around his neck, which is the only clue about his identity, and he joins Mendoza on a trip to explore the New World. This journey takes them to Tao, the last surviving member of a highly advanced race who is looking for the remains of his clan and Zia, an Incan girl who is looking for her father just like Esteban. As luck would have it, all the missing pieces in this puzzle point to the legendary El Dorado, the Seven Cities of Gold, and thus begins the crazy treasure hunt. Although this is considered an anime because it was released first in Japan, it's a Franco-Japanese project that explores the best of both worlds. It quickly became a cult classic in the West, and somehow missed out on some attention in Japan. The nail-biting adventure is an integral part of the story, and the narrative also highlights the never-say-die attitude that keeps the protagonist going through all their hardships. It starts off with a historical approach, but the story quickly changes course and becomes a grand fantasy adventure. The visuals are breathtaking, and there are few contemporary anime shows that can match its style. We strongly recommend this anime for anyone who wants to feel the classic children's adventure styled narrative. Castle in the Sky, 1986. Hayao Miyazaki and Studio Ghibli is a match made in heaven, and Castle in the Sky is one of the divine products of this magical association. It's set in a fictional late 19th century, and it tells the story of an orphaned young boy named Pazu who lives in a small mining town. One day, he watches a teenage girl floating through the skies, and she descends in this region. Pazu learns that the girl named Shida is being chased by dangerous pirates and corrupt governments for a magical crystal necklace in her possession. This this necklace is connected to a floating city called Laputa, and Pazu and Shida must find the city before the baddies can get to them. Castle in the Sky won the Animage Anime Grand Prix in 1986, and it deserves every bit of the appreciation that came its way. It is regarded as one of Studio Ghibli's most imaginative projects, and the animation style is absolutely stunning. The innovative and thrilling storyline manages to keep you on your toes, and the dialogue is also well written. The fast-paced narrative bodes well with this story, and there are some lovable characters involved in this engaging adventure that will make you root for them. The excellent musical score by Joe Hisashi also deserves a special mention. It's hard to believe that this anime is almost going to be 40 years old because the visuals are still fresh as ever. The movie has everything that one could expect from the perfect adventure, and it would be a great loss to miss out on this classic. Vampire Hunter D, 1985. We can't possibly explore the finest 80s anime without talking about some of the memorable horror anime that came our way. Vampire Hunter D is premised in a distant future, where supernatural creatures such as vampires control civilization. Doris Lang is a beautiful young woman, and she is picked to be the next bride for the notorious vampire lord, Count Magnus Lee. After she is bitten by the vampire, Doris fears that her life will now be controlled by the Count, and she enlists the help of a mysterious vampire hunter who goes by the name D. Can she escape her forsaken fate of eternal damnation if D successfully hunts down the Count? Before Wesley Snipes picked up his sword and became the iconic vampire hunter, there was D. This anime flick is comprised of everything that made the art popular during the 80s. There's a heavy dose of graphic violence, explicit nudity, and a nail-biting story arc. It quickly attained cult status in the West, and people still remember this fondly as one of the earlier vampire hunting genre projects. The character of Count Magnus Lee was inspired by Christopher Lee's portrayal of Dracula, and his aura stands out throughout the movie. The plot has a few cliches which horror fans shouldn't mind, and the post-apocalyptic setting works nicely for the narrative. Even the voice acting is not abysmal like some of the other 80s anime projects, and this thoughtful and atmospheric movie surely deserves to be on your watch list. 
City Hunter, 1987. The life of a seasoned hitman is incomplete without being associated with a few alluring ladies, and the titular protagonist of this anime, City Hunter, aka Ryo Seba, fits the bill perfectly. He's a private eye who prefers beautiful girls hiring him for his services. This carefree gun for hire will take up the deadliest of missions for the prettiest of women, but things take a dark turn once his associate, Hideyuki Makimura, is murdered. Ryo now has to take care of Hideyuki's sister, Kaori, who starts working as his jealous new partner. City Hunter is a guilty pleasure, and the anime is quite unapologetic about this. The protagonist, Ryo, is a colorful man who is the last resort when the cops can't help you out. He does everything from offering protection to cleaning up one's enemies, and he's an expert marksman and a deadly fighter. His lustful side is kept in check by his assistant, Kaori, and the absurd humor of the show is its greatest asset. There are some great characters to spice things up, and each of Ryo's adventures is memorable in one way or another. The animation quality is quite decent, and the action sequences have been nicely captured throughout the narrative. If you're looking for a super entertaining and fun show, City Hunter is the one to opt for because it never gets tiring to watch Kaori hitting Ryo with a hammer to control his lust-filled advances. Grave of the Fireflies, 1988. We apologize for the abrupt jump from the fun-filled city hunter to the harsh and tragic world of Grave of the Fireflies, but that's exactly how diverse the 80s anime are. This animated war tragedy is a Studio Ghibli classic that's ranked as one of the greatest war films of all time. It tells the story of a teenage boy named Seda and his little sister Setsuko after they are separated from their parents during the Second World War. They go on to live with one of their relatives, but food scarcity and worsening conditions in Japan force them to rely on each other in the crisis. It all boils down to a brutal struggle for survival once the food sources dry up, and be prepared to witness the most heartbreaking climax that awaits the siblings. War doesn't only affect the soldiers and the statesmen, the real impact is felt somewhere else, amidst the innocent lives that have nothing to do with the conflict. This simple yet convincing theory is the heart of the story, as we see the young siblings failing to secure what is right rightfully theirs. Young Seda has to grow up much faster than he should, and he becomes a father figure for Setsuko as their hardships continue to increase. The real tragedy of the narrative is when you start to feel the helplessness and trauma felt by Seda as he watches his sisters slowly slip into the grasp of death. The artwork in this movie is phenomenal, and the imagery and irony throughout the narrative will move you to tears. We strongly advise grabbing a box of tissues when you sit for this movie because it's going to be one hell of an emotional journey. Mobile Suit Zeta Gundam 1985 This mecha anime is a sequel to the original Mobile Suit Gundam, and it's just as impressive. Mobile Suit Zeta Gundam is premised in a futuristic Universal Century timeline, and the events in this show take place eight years after the original series. There are two warring factions in this futuristic world, the corrupt task force of the Earth Federation, called the Titans, and a rebel group called the Anti-Earth Union Group, or AEUG. We hear the story from the perspective of a young member of the AEUG named Camille Bad on, and some of the key characters from the original series return in supporting roles. If you think that sequels are usually disappointing, you need to check out Mobile Suit Zeta Gundam to realize what a perfect sequel looks like. It's everything that a true mecha anime should be, and many regard this as one of the best installments of the entire franchise. The futuristic setting is nicely captured in the narrative, as are the political elements and some very relatable characters, like Camille, Emma, and Quattro making things interesting. This show promises some of the best action sequences you've ever seen, and the character development is also worth noting. There are some heartbreaking moments, and the episodes never run out of content to hold your attention. Some of the dark themes and story arcs are actually an improvement over its predecessor. This anime is a treat for the Gundam fans, or for those who appreciate the mecha anime genre. Dirty Pair, 1985-1988 If there's a thing called buddy cop anime, Dirty Pair would certainly fall into that category. This anime series tells the story of two teenage girls, Kay and Yuri, who happen to be capable crime fighters. They work for the World's Work Welfare Association, and are codenamed the Lovely Angels. They take down all forms of crime and injustice across the universe, but they aren't there without a few quirks. Each of their missions evidently ends up causing a disaster through no fault of their own. Their tendency of causing these unwilling destructions gives them the name The Dirty Pair, and the show explores their fun-filled, action-packed exploits. Many anime fans unknowingly dismiss this series because of the suggestive title, which indicates a very different kind of content than what the show actually has. First things first, Dirty Pair is far from being dirty in the way you may think. It's a tale of two temperamental law enforcers and their colorful adventures, and this is just about it. Yes, the protagonists are scantily clad, but that's the only thing dirty here, because the narrative 
narrative is all about non-stop action. The tongue-in-cheek humor nicely balances things out, and the animation quality isn't too bad considering the era. If you're in the mood for some unadulterated fun and don't mind a guilty pleasure anime to keep you entertained, Dirty Pair might be just what the doctor ordered. Attacker U, 1984. The legacy of 80s anime wouldn't be complete without some classic sports anime being added to the list. Attacker U is one of the best in business, and the series revolves around a young girl named Yu Hazuki who moves to the big city of Tokyo after growing up in the countryside. She struggles to get used to this new life, but she soon realizes her incredible volleyball talents and joins the Hikawa team. She dreams of playing for Japan's national women's volleyball team, but her father isn't supportive of her sporting aspirations for some unknown reason. The show captures her development and struggles as she copes with her father's opposition and a budding romance in her heart. The story is as simple as it gets, and yet it never stops being charming for the viewers. Attacker U is a great adaptation of a popular manga, and it succeeds in being true to the source material. Besides the well-developed plot, the anime is also boosted by some decent visuals. Of course, there is some recycling of the drawings, but it would simply be far too expensive for Japanese animators back in the day to do otherwise. The narrative moves ahead in a linear direction, and one cannot be blamed for calling the show somewhat predictable. That being said, Attacker U has some thrilling volleyball game sequences that will keep you on the edge of your seat. Overall, it deserves to be watched simply because of its inherent feel-good factor, and in order to remember how emotionally fulfilling 80s anime shows can be. Super Dimensional Fortress Macross, 1982. It's a chaotic situation with the ongoing World War III in a futuristic world, when suddenly things change after the arrival of an alien spaceship that crash lands on Earth. All the nations view this as an extraterrestrial threat, and they declare a ceasefire in order to deal with the common enemy. A united world creates the United Nations Space Navy, and they rebuild the spaceship as a fortress and adopt its advanced technology. However, the alien threat finally arrives to retrieve the ship, and Earth has to defend itself against this invading threat. When the true secrets of the alien spacecraft are revealed, the desperate war against the alien enemies intensifies. If you consider the genre of space opera anime, Super Dimensional Fortress Macross is probably one of the best. What truly differentiates it from the plethora of alien invasion space operas is the focus on the human element of the story. All the characters that are introduced in this show are flawed in some way, and humans regularly fail at fighting things beyond their technology in spite of all their war experience. Another noticeable factor that makes this show widely popular all over the world is the presence of a pan-cultural cast. The protagonist may be Japanese, but there are Russian, American, and Italian characters in the mix of things. Although the narrative features one battle after another, it is essentially an anti-war epic. Many fans believe that the Macross franchise is an equivalent to Star Trek in the anime industry, and this deeply compelling work of art promises to be a truly enriching experience. Magical Princess Minky Momo, 1982. Magic and fantasy-based anime shows became a phenomenon during the 80s, and Magical Princess Minky Momo is one of the better products in this genre. This anime tells the story of a forgotten Sky Kingdom of Fenar and Arsa, which was once a part of Earth. The Sky Kingdom is home to the fairy tale characters, and it drifted away after the people of Earth lost their dreams and hopes. Minky Momo is the princess of this magical land, and she's sent to Earth by her parents so that the people can learn to dream again. She is helped by three of her animal friends, and Minky Momo also has a magical wand that allows her to transform into a young lady whenever she wants. Can she bring back Fen Aranarsa closer to Earth and revive the dreams and goodwill of the people? This is easily one of the most underrated 80s anime shows, and even some of the diehard anime fans aren't aware of its existence. The lack of recognition, however, is quite surprising because magical princess Minky Momo has the perfect recipe for success. It dwells on a fantasy-based premise that thrives courtesy of an engaging storyline. The character development is quite impressive considering the juvenile theme of the plot. You will also get to witness an impressive art style that makes it aesthetically pleasing. The sound and background score could have been better, but it's still not worth complaining about. Overall, the show is good enough for a one-time watch just for the sake of revisiting how simple things used to be during the 80s. Angel's Egg, 1985. This anime movie follows the life of a young girl who lives by herself in a seemingly abandoned city. The post-apocalyptic cityscape doesn't provide enough food and resources, and the girl has to scavenge for things to sustain herself in this strange world. However, there is one thing that she protects with all her life, a large, mysterious egg that she carries with her at all times. The city is inhabited by restless shadows, and there is no one that the girl can trust until she meets a young man one day. Their conversations range from philosophical topics to discussions about their potential past 
past lives. Eventually, the movie boils down to a shocking and ambiguous climax that reveals a few mysteries, but leaves many unanswered. Angel's Egg is more of an animated art than a story, and critics all over the world have been impressed by the remarkable visual style. The story element is rather negligible here, and the dialogue in this anime flick isn't much better. We could go on and on theorizing about the meaning of this movie, and that is the beauty of the project. The visuals in this movie are staggering, and the breathtaking designs will leave you mesmerized. You will also fall in love with the sublime soundtrack composed by the legendary Yoshihiro Kano. All in all, the movie promises to be a haunting experience, which is probably a brilliant representation of the internal struggle of the director. Go ahead and check out this surreal work of art, because it'll make you feel things that you never knew you could feel. Armored Trooper Vodums, 1983. Mecha anime doesn't get much better than this 80s classic. It tells the story of two nations in the Astragius galaxy, Balorant and Gilgamesh. They have been locked in a long-drawn century-old war, and finally, an uneasy truce has been reached. In this war, the main weapon that was used was a humanoid combat vehicle, which was piloted by a single soldier who had very little chance of survival because of the thin armor in these mass-produced ships. The protagonist is one of these Armored Trooper pilots named Chiriko Kuvi, and he has been roped in for a secret mission. He gets caught up in a massive conspiracy and ends up being hunted down by both the army and the criminals. Can he redeem himself and solve the mystery behind the unnecessary war that was waged for so long? This is another example of an extremely underrated 80s anime that not many know about. We believe that this anime is right on par with the likes of Gundam and is a sci-fi classic. This action-packed, character-driven plot is a thorough entertainer, and the mecha combat sequences are impressively realistic. Behind all the action and drama that unfolds, there is a deep underlying theme, the falsified glory associated with war and its perils. The animation quality can appear to be rather limited, but you can let that pass considering that the show is from the early 80s. The background score is music to the ears and adds to the narrative. One of the best things about Armored Trooper Vodums is the believable storytelling, and every mecha anime fan needs to check out this hidden gem. Space Cobra 1982. Johnson has a monotonous life with his conventional job and usual day-to-day -day activities, and he longs for some excitement and thrill. That all changes when he starts to have vivid memories of a life as a legendary space pirate named Cobra. Cobra would travel across the universe along with his partner, Lady Armoroid, and these two were feared by the authorities for their ruthlessness. Cobra had a psycho gun attached to his left arm, and even the pirate guild hated the duo for daring to challenge its authority. When Johnson meets a casino manager in the real world, he suddenly identifies him as the leader of the pirate guild, Vakin, who was defeated by Cobra. Vakin recognizes Johnson as well, but once he attempts to exact revenge, the psycho gun hidden in Johnson's left arm is activated. Now that his memories are fully restored and Johnson is aware of his real identity, he sets out to settle scores with the pirate guild. People in the US might know this anime as Space Adventure Cobra, and it's best known for striking a fine balance between comedy, action, and adventure. The sci-fi elements of the narrative are on point, and the Star Wars-like world is bound to grab your attention. Although the anime is episodic, there are a few story arcs plugged in to make things interesting. The movie version of Space Cobra is also an impressive venture, and the artwork and animation in both of these projects are pretty decent. Cobra, aka Johnson, is a great choice for the protagonist, and he offers the perfect mix of James Bond and Han Solo. The cherry on top is the opening and closing theme of the anime, which has a really nice ring to it. If space, adventure, and sci-fi are your cup of tea, consider checking out this wonderful specimen. Ginga Hiyoryu v 1983. The 80s had an undeniable love affair with mecha anime, and Ginga Hiyoryu v is another fine product of this association. This anime is loosely based on Jules Verne's novel, Duan de Vacances, and it's a story about 13 children and their adventurous journeys across the galaxy. Their human colony has been wiped out by an alien threat, and this ragtag group of children must come together to find their way to Earth. Luckily for them, the children are assisted by a squadron of giant robots and a training ship that they had used to escape. But the journey across space can be a perilous one, with unknown threats waiting around every corner. This obscure title from the 80s can be best described as a show that uses simple concepts to tell a gripping story of survival. The futuristic premise quickly comes down to primal instincts of survival once the protagonists find themselves in a challenging situation. One of the focal points of this anime rests on the development of the children as their journey continues, and they are made to mature very quickly because of the situation at hand. You 
you will find yourself relating to these diverse characters and rooting for them the whole time. Coming to the visual aspect of this anime, the mecha designs are on point and the fight sequences are well executed. The music is also perfectly suited to the storyline, and there is nothing about the anime that can make it seem too pretentious or flashy. VFAM is the epitome of substance over style, and this product from the golden age of mecha anime is a must-watch for every fan of the genre out there. Giant Gorg 1984. When a new island emerged southeast of the country of Samoa, it was named New Austral Island. However, there was a secret surrounding the island that made an organization named Gale cover up its entire existence on the map. They even killed a professor who was obsessed with the island, but he left a note for his son, Yu Tagami, to meet his student, Dr. Wave, in New York. They embark on a mission to reach this mysterious island, but they are attacked by Gale's henchmen. Luckily for them, they have an unexpected savior, a giant sentient robot called Gorg. They join forces with the local defenders of the island and slowly learn more about the island and its mysteries than Gale ever intended for anyone to know. The director of Giant Gorg, Yoshikazu Yasukio, is better known for his work on Mobile Suit Gundam, but this is also one of his notable projects. Giant Gorg will impress its viewers with the creativity in every aspect of the anime. The story is unique, and the mecha element brought in by the titular Gorg is also quite intriguing. There are some lovable characters and a well-defined enemy, but the real story reaches far beneath the black and white personalities. The animation standards are not bad at all considering the times, and you'll fall in love with the simplicity of this narrative. This isn't exactly a kid's show because of some violence and minor nudity, but there's nothing too extreme to put off a squeamish audience. Captain Tsubasa, 1988. We are back again with yet another sports anime because you simply cannot keep these out while covering anime from the 80s. Captain Tsubasa tells the story of an 11-year-old elementary school student who happens to be a die-hard soccer fan. He dreams of representing Japan in the FIFA World Cup and winning the trophy for his country one day. Tsubasa has the skills to achieve his dreams, and this anime focuses on his journey as he develops his tricks and abilities to outsmart his opponents. The kid has quite a few challenges along the way, and he has to deal with everything from unpleasant adversaries to sporting conspiracies. There haven't been too many better soccer-based animated shows, and Captain Tsubasa deserves all the credit for being best in business. For starters, the makers have ensured that the soccer matches are well simulated and absolutely on point. Also, this version of soccer introduces some special skills, which seem to be a mix of kung fu and Japanese martial arts, and these abilities within the game take it up to Dragon Ball Z levels. Many of the modern-day greats in soccer have claimed to have been inspired by this anime, and you can see why. Why? There are plenty of lessons on offer here, and the protagonist's passion for the sport is something to learn from. The animation quality is a bit sloppy, but that will be the least of your concerns while you enjoy this fulfilling journey. If you want your kids to learn about the love and passion for a sport, this is an anime that you need to introduce before them. Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind, 1984. Because of their haunting past, anti-war theories and philosophies have often been the theme of Japanese anime, and the 80s sprung up many classics in this genre. Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind is an iconic post-apocalyptic anime flick, written and directed by the legendary Heo Miyazaki. The titular Nausicaa is a young 16-year-old girl, a princess in the Valley of the Wind. She is a pacifist who struggles to bring peace between two warring nations that have destroyed each other in the long, drawn-out conflict. Can she bring a glimmer of hope to this dying planet? Miyazaki is hailed as one of the greats in the film industry, but his legacy would have been unforgettable even if he only made this one movie. This anime flick is a visual splendor that captures the best of both worlds by exploring sci-fi and fantasy archetypes with a strong anti-war message. The storytelling is so crisp and natural that it never seems preachy, and there are some deeply impactful scenes that are extremely thought-provoking. The protagonist is the perfect inspirational heroine in this world of nihilistic violence and the story elements have been accurately adapted from the original manga. It is unfortunate that such a work of art suffered the side effects of poor editing for the foreign audience, and it went relatively unnoticed by many around the world. All we can say is that it will be a worthwhile experience if you just bask in this tale of pure goodness and hope. Maison Ikoku, 1986. Maison Ikoku is one of those anime shows that tugs at your heartstrings. It revolves around the life of Yusako Godai, who lives in an old boarding house in the quiet town of Clock Hill. Initially, Godai is disturbed by his unruly neighbors and plans to move out, but his life changes following an interaction with the new boarding house manager, Kyoto Odenashi. He falls hopelessly in love with her, and although she reciprocates his feelings, Kyoto is also concerned about cherishing the memories of her dead husband. She struggles 
struggles with the turmoil within her, where she wants to explore a new life and also hold on to her past. Can she finally find happiness? This anime series stands out as one of the finest romance anime shows ever made. The true asset of this anime lies in the variety of the characters. The story pans out across seven years, and you get to see these characters grow and develop with time. You'll encounter relatable and lovable characters like Godai and Kyoto, and also some annoying ones that add color to the linear narrative. There are some fun plot diversions to keep things interesting, and the subtle humor never allows boredom to creep in. The narrative stays true to the original manga, and it is almost like watching love in motion. You get to experience some deep emotions, diverse characters, relatable problems, and above all, a brilliant story. If you haven't seen this already, you're missing something in your life, and we recommend fixing that problem ASAP. Appleseed 1988. Appleseed is premised in a futuristic post-apocalyptic world, where everything has been recreated following the events of the Third World War. Olympus City has been built on the ashes and the ruins, and various terrorist forces threaten the regular function of this city. Dune and Nut is a valiant cop who takes down these threats along with his cyborg partner, and the duo fights to keep the terrorists away from controlling this city computer, which would cause widespread chaos. However, the story has multiple perspectives, and you'll soon start questioning who's on the right side, the cops, or the so-called terrorists. This anime flick has been adapted from a best-selling manga, and the creators have ensured that it's a faithful adaptation. Of course, it would be futile to compare this with the manga, but it's a brave effort nevertheless, for a minimal budget. Appleseed has a great post-apocalyptic story, and the narrative has been supported by some decent animation. The action sequences do not disappoint, and the fast-paced narrative makes sure that you're glued to your seats the entire time. The unobtrusive soundtrack works well for the story, and you'll be treated to a fair share of funny moments. The anime could have performed better if the runtime was slightly increased, but it is still a wholehearted and entertaining project worth checking out. They were 11, 1986. The Interstellar Alliance has managed to establish peace in the universe, and the Cosmo Academy is a prestigious institution set up by this organization. Getting into Cosmo Academy is extremely challenging, and the competition is fierce. Lane Tadatos aspires to be a part of this esteemed institution, and for his final test, he is sent in a group of 10 to survive 53 days on a spaceship without any communication with the outside world. Trouble starts brewing when a headcount reveals that there are 11 people on board, and clearly, one of them is an imposter. This anime flick is a forgotten classic, and contrary to what you might be thinking based on the plot, it's actually a story about friendship and love. This brilliant sci-fi piece is based on a manga by Moto Hegio, and the element of suspense in the narrative makes time fly while you watch it. There's a great variety of characters among the 11 members, and the protagonist has some kind of a sixth sense that helps him get closer to the truth. Tempers flare and tensions run high, and the final revelation of the so-called mystery will blow your mind. The best thing about the story is that each one of the characters has a strong motivation to pass the test, and none of them is willing to give up. Witness this timeless space opera, and we can assure you that you will be experiencing one of the most unique anime projects from the 80s. Gunbuster 1988 Here comes another treat for the mecha anime lovers out there. Gunbuster tells the story of a futuristic world, which comes under attack from deadly and gigantic aliens. Noriko Takea is a young fighter who is the daughter of a deceased captain who fell in battle against these aliens. She trains intensely to become a successful mech pilot just like her father, even though she struggles to come to terms with the loss. After making her way through the rigorous training process, she is finally assigned to fight in one of the Gunbuster mechs, which are the Earth's most powerful weapons. Can she avenge her father and save humanity from certain destruction? Space warfare and mecha anime can prove to be a magical combination, and Gunbuster utilizes the opportunity to perfection. It starts off as standard fare, but the narrative soon reveals further complications in the plot. Unlike the usual alien invasion stories, Gunbuster focuses more on the characters involved in the conflict. There aren't as many fight scenes as you would expect, but there is no shortage of entertainment to keep you interested. The attention to detail is fascinating, and everything from the mechs to the aliens has been paid adequate attention by the designers. The show can be a bit heavy on sap, and ideally, it's not recommended for kids. But once you look past the skimpy outfits and other fan service moments, you'll unearth a great story. The ending can come off as a tad bit silly, but that's hardly a reason for you to avoid this unique and beautifully made mecha anime. Silver Fang, 1986. Jin is born as an Akita Inu puppy, destined to become the protector of the people in a quiet little mountain town. His father has been the epitome of duty and loyalty as he fearlessly fought the deadly man-eating monstrous bear, Aka Kabuto. After he fell from the mountains while fighting, he was presumed dead, and Jin tries to become a worthy successor. He seeks out the deadly bear 
and soon realizes that Akakabuto has an army of powerful bears that terrorize the human settlements in the region. As it boils down to an all-out war between dogs and bears, Jin seeks out trusted allies, and meanwhile, he also finds out that his father isn't dead after all. Silver Fang is one of the most nostalgic shows from our childhood, so you'll have to pardon our bias here. The show manages to deliver a touching story, which is all about a compelling journey of courage, love, strength, and honor. It's not just a conventional revenge story, and the narrative touches upon various aspects of life, most importantly, becoming an adult. The portrayal of how dogs are exploited is also quite thought-provoking. The animation quality is probably not even close to what we're used to now, but that will hardly even bother you with such a gripping narrative. It's surprising that no one ever thought of adapting this into a movie of epic proportions. Silver Fang is still as fresh as it was over 30 years ago, and we strongly recommend Silver Fang for everyone seeking a nice and comforting good old-fashioned anime. Barefoot Gen, 1983. The effects of the nuclear bomb dropped on Japan are some of the darkest moments in human history, and several anime shows and movies have tried to capture the plight of the people back in the day. Barefoot Gen is another of those powerful anti-war sentiments taking shape through the eyes of veteran director Mori Masaki. It shows the struggles of a young boy named Gen, who lives with his family in the ill-fated city of Hiroshima. As the country prepares to embrace the harrowing end of the Second World War, Gen's father believes that the war is unwinnable for his country. His views have earned him a traitor's tag in the town, and everyone from the traitors to his neighbors discriminate against him and his family. Jen and his parents struggle to find food, but they soon find out that the lack of basic resources is the least of their concerns, as the American military launches the deadliest assault ever. Barefoot Jen is a haunting story of courage and survival, and the effects of the nuclear bomb on a young boy's life and the lives of Japanese people will move even the harshest person to tears. Never before have the horrors of Hiroshima been captured so realistically, and the narrative offers an unflinching first-hand look at this disaster. The gritty details are worth noticing, and the animation style is perfectly suited for the disturbing tone of of the narrative. Watch for the scene that shows the physical effects caused by the dropping of the bomb, bases melting away, families being turned to ashes in the wink of an eye, and many more. Cinema is rarely so honest, and Barefoot Gen is a must-watch for every individual because everyone should know about the horrors of the past in order to avoid repeating history again. The diversity of anime across the 80s was the secret behind its legacy, and we had some all-time greats across every genre during this time. Do let us know in the comments below about your favorite ones on the list and tell us about any anime that you feel deserved a position on our list but missed out. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one, be safe out there, and thanks for watching.